Hey guys, what's up? Footy is back. Roll the intro. Ah, yeah, so football's back this week. A few cool things that have been happening on social media. I'm just going to flick it back between me and Lukey. So, Lukey, what do we got first? Here we go. Last night we had the airing of the Titans documentary. Yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. Thank you to Matthew Adekponya. Uh, thanks for putting that together. This is the type of content that we need in rugby league for us to grow the game um, to the younger generation, but also to uh, people outside. So a lot of us who watch American sports have actually got into it through ESPN docos, your 30 for 30s, um, all that sort of type of content there. We start to fall in love with the team. We start to fall in love with the character. And essentially we end up watching the sport as well. And I feel like rugby league's tailored towards uh, global expansion. I don't reckon it's a great idea to do it straight away, but it's a sport that's tailored towards highlights. So if you look at us, compared to Rugby Union, our distance between each other allows for contact. George DeFuel's highlights have been making like um, House of Highlights in Sports Centre. And if you look at Instagram, if you look at social media, which is a massive part of the world, and you combine that with sports, it's tailored towards highlights games. And like we talk about basketball a lot. Like basketball is one of my favourite sports, but I'll never sit there and watch a whole game of basketball. But I do love the highlights. I do love the culture in and around it. And this storytelling from this building Titans docker is a step in the right direction, I feel, for um, NRL. But you've got a bit of background on it, mate? Yeah, so I've spoken with Matthew a couple of times via DM. He was actually um, – he will, he's got a few roles. He works for uh, Paddy Mills in yep. the U.S., um, he works for Joe Ingalls in the US as well and he'll do all their Instagram so if you look at their Instagram accounts proper polish high quality photos all the clips he must manage the relationship with the social team any good dunks shots anything like that that's always up on their feeds but the cool thing with what he got to do he got brought in by the Hawks last year and he got to follow Mellow round and yeah. all the cool content around Mellow was through his lens and like the way that that was documented was incredible I thought yeah so we need to be gassing these types of people up so we'll gas them up on our page because we need these types of creators in our game a lot more and we'll sort of it'll start to grow the game and like storytelling is important and storytelling through visual form in terms of movies and documentary is the key to growth and the key to get young people excited you need stories you need characters and we've got plenty of those and I love the start titan story of like the kind of feel sorry for us but now we're starting to turn around we've got the right coach we're starting to recruit right um, Gold Coast has never been successful in the past or any sporting team so they're sitting up very very well I've only watched the first episode but I know the next two are coming out tonight and I've missed one so I'm looking forward to watching all that so shout out to uh, Matthew doing great things and I hope you make a fuckload more content for the NRL yeah it's cool like to shout out to our boy Bocco as well but it's cool to see like creators in that world starting to pick up jobs with NRL clubs because I think it's only going to go better. Another one who's been um, killing it in the content, we put him on our Instagram the other weekend, Eric. He does a lot with like some of the Broncos boys behind the scenes. He, yeah. shot, he shot Quaid before doing all content like that. So I think he's working for Brisbane Bullets in the NBL. So it wouldn't surprise me if he's picked up by an NRL club in and around that area too. So And that's what you, do, you need to do. You need a crossover between sports and creators. And there's this beautiful um, sync happening up right now. And obviously you started with sort of the media with Denon and that but then you get a visual aspect of it from well with people that know how to use Photoshop and you watch our game sort of start to blow up and this is where I feel like and I hate bagging rugby union because globally it's a bigger game than rugby league is right now and I do understand that but within this country they don't have any of that they don't have the big fucking TV contract as well they don't have all the sub media things that happen off the back of it like even those guys who made that intro video and that roast he shared last night it was about a minute long it was just a G up it's very NRL demographic knockabouts getting about with their boys there's no one making that type of content in and around rugby union and it's really really hurting them on the social front because They've got all these old heads trying to protect the game of how it used to be. But the game is changing right now. And I feel like an NRL is in a good spot right now that we can actually move this game forward a lot, a lot bigger than what it is right now. Yeah, 100%. Speaking about um, content in the NRL, bit of a blow up yesterday, last night on NRL 360. The old double agent Cooper Cronk versus, versus Buzz Rothfield. Um, it's quite interesting. It's sort of hard to determine. We had that offline chat about the actual direction of Fox League. How are they trying to relate with the core target market? Obviously, their 
media model is built off the back of negativity. Um, that's why the rules always change in and around the game. You've got NRL 360, and this is one of our biggest shows, and you've got Controversy Corner. All they do is just complain about everything. So you feel like the product is actually wrong where we've got this beautiful product. But I enjoyed uh, Cooper Cronk standing up against Buzz Rothfield. I don't think too many people have done it that way and executed it that well. Um, when you look at Cooper Cronk, I've never met him. I've obviously played against him, but you feel like you could trust him. Yeah. <laughs> you feel like if you told him a secret, he wouldn't tell anyone else. And the way that he's carried himself throughout his whole career, the way that he's played, the way that he's carried himself into media, um, yeah, I really enjoyed watching that sort of confrontation between back and forth. And he had a right point. Like Joey Johns used to used to um, be at like four or five different clubs. Like what's the difference? And Daryl Halligan used to do kicking for every other club as well. So it just didn't make sense, but it did make for great TV. I think um, Buzz Rothfield and Paul Ken and Fox Sports know what they're doing when they're trying to push those types of agendas. Like we've talked to guys from Fox Sports and they go, they'll push agendas on, onto you so you can create the argument, which creates good TV. And then it's kind of just sweet afterwards. So that's understandable. Uh, but yeah, loved, loved Kronk sort of sticking up for him. Um, he's come out with a bang this year. He sort of criticised uh, Adam Reynolds the week before and Reynolds has gone back at him as well. So it's interesting, interesting. Content. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like the younger, younger audience are looking at like the American sports not as much as they were. They're looking more. at Denon. They're looking at mm. Denon, aren't yeah. they? And so if you look at Fox Sports and who they've got lined up, they've got all the, all the old players and they should be on there talking about the game and giving their expert reviews like they deserve that. Uh, but there's no really other content in and around it. Like, we grew up with Matty John, so we find him funny. But, um, yeah, I think a lot of people are watching Denon right now in that sort of 16 to 35 uh, category. There's no one on Fox Sports that's, like, super young or super witty or, like, that nice little crossover. It's mm. very formal, very traditional type of media. Um, it be interesting to see how it plays out. Obviously, we've got guys like us and Denon and Roasty, uh, we're making all these sub, we, I call the sub media. We're making all this type of content that tailors towards this category that essentially drives people towards that. But there's going to be a switch there somewhere. There's going to be a shift somewhere. You got Andrew John saying there's lowest, lowest participation in junior rugby league in the last f forever. It's because we're not marketing the game that's appealing to the younger generation. And if we do it the old school way without social media, um, we won't capture these young guys. You need that cross between, like your Kalen Pong is your perfect example. You need someone that plays football, then he's a vlogger as well, and he's got his clothing stuff and he takes his photography. Like, kids want to see that unison of all these bunch of different things. So, um, just shows that they can be relatable. It's like, I can take photo. I enjoy doing that. I also enjoy watching footy. I might not play footy, but I have the same interests as this bloke. Do you know what? Um, Scope brought up a really good point the other day. His little brother, he goes, he never used to watch football, never used to go for Parramatta, even when Scope was playing. <laughs> And all of a sudden, he loves Parramatta now for the last three, four years. And the reason why is because King Guffo. Like he he's your favourite player. He goes, King Guffo. And King Guffo is like a personality that's just been built off the back of our sub-medias. The den and camps like just gas them up forever. So that's the importance what I talked about before about having um, characters. You, you fall in love with characters. When you watch a movie, you fall in love with a character. You watch TV series, you fall in love with characters. If we train our players all to be the same, they all should be role models. They all should be doing this. They all should be doing that. They all speak the same. It just doesn't become very interesting, does it? So imagine a movie without a good and bad character. I mean, you need these different types of characters in the game and these sub-medias, your Denons, your Roses are gassing these people up and I feel like we're a part of that as well. And yeah, I think yeah, I don't know. We're in a good position right now. We just can't really fuck it up, can we? Yeah, foot on the gas, 100%, leading into Thursday night. Bit of footy companion. Yeah, pumped to have footy companion back this year. It won't be every week like it was last year. It's super hard to sort of format like two and a half hours of content. I know we're watching football and we're talking and stuff. I don't think we'll be on the piss as much this year. Yeah, I can't see that as much from the boy. Like, I think we started with a bang last year. Everyone's getting on the source. This new concept, we were doing it as well. But could have a bit more footy chat sprinkled in it. it depends on what type of guests we get on as well. Yeah. I think Dean will probably go quite footy with his footy companion that he's been talking about for ages. Maybe we can get be a bit more pop culture with it, depending on who we get in. You never know. Nah, I think with that type of stuff, it's strictly like footy and like shit chat. Like, it's not really that cross between culture there. Because uh, you, you'll find this with our content. They're like, oh, just stick to footy content. Just stick to footy content where we don't see ourselves as that. But, yeah, it should be good. We've got Denon coming on as well. He's launching his one on Sunday, which will be really, really good. It's got Finchy, Rini Matua, um, and Jarell Yayi. So most of those boys have been through here, and uh, they're all fucking good vibes as well. So that's going to be really good to watch. Make sure you tune into that. But really looking forward to the battle. Rabbitohs versus uh, Melbourne. 
Probably the best matchup you probably could have asked for for round one Thursday night. Everyone's going to be watching that. Everyone's excited for football's back. You got the two best spines in the comp: uh, Latrell, Cody Walker, Adam Reynolds, Damian Cook, elite spine going up against the defending champs. And uh, disappointing, Harry Grant's not playing. You would have loved to see him play, but hectic cheese. There's not many teams in the comp that bring up a backup hooker and he's probably a top five hooker in the comp as well so that battle there uh jerome hughes has just re-signed as well for another three years that's exciting uh munster the prayers he's ready to go he's always keen to play he loves football and ryan pappenhausen he's only played 42 games but he's elite he's a, he's one of our elite fullbacks he's one of our elite players so uh i think whew, it's gonna be good man you look at rabbit shape they throw so much at you they've got um, they get you in a lot of one-on-one -on -one positions where you have to tackle Latrell one-on-one or Cody one-on-one. -on -one. And there's not many teams that run shape as beautifully as Souths. And they're going up against, notoriously, over the last 20 years, one of the best defensive teams in, in the comp. So be interesting to see how they stop it. Really looking forward to it. But make sure you tune into the footy companion and pump for it. Yeah. You know, Craig Bellany never lost a round one game with the yeah. Storm. That's mental. I, I was almost going to load up on him, like money-wise. Um, we've got a new bidding theory this year, but... Yeah, just something about Souths. I think they'll be ready for this. That's I, what I mean. Like, if anyone's going to give them a run for their money, it's it's going to be Souths. They'll be firing. Yeah, you never know. They've pumped them in a trial, pumped Dragons in a trial. They might just go, yeah, yeah. we're going to cruise up and win. But Melbourne's always ready. Yeah. Always ready. Even with Reynolds, when he was on um, Finchie's podcast, you could just see he was just burning at how close they came last year, and he's ready to go. Yeah, and obviously off the back of Cooper Crunk, criticising him as well. So, um, man, he, he's lost a couple... A preliminary finals in a row. He's got Cooper Cronk bagging him out now. He's coming off contract. Man, Reynolds is going to be on fire this year. Yeah. And he's coming off the back of career best form. That was his best year he's ever had last year. Uh, that unison that they have between him, Cook, and Cody Walker, which is super special. So if they can stay healthy, they're a big chance this year. Uh, but yeah, Melbourne round one, man. They've just, they're four packs all time, man. They've got a really good four pack. Um, that they, they never beat themselves. That's the that's the key to Melbourne. They don't beat themselves. So make sure you tune into Footy Companion. Appreciate awesome. you guys. See you there.